Hey guys, I'm um, doing another Pro Tools video here, and I am going to be showing you guys another really beginner tutorial. Um, it's going to be how to simply record in Pro Tools. Pro Tools, the the way that it looks can be really overwhelming, and it may be a little confusing at first, when like just to figure out how you record anything. So in another video I had, I talked about what an interface is and you definitely do need an interface to record in Pro Tools um, and your interface needs a a quarter inch and can support high Z. Um, high Z is the term used for high impedance and I talked about in the last video my specific interface. It had a it had a button called instrument, and that changed the impedance that the interface was looking for. So it's important that you use the right input when you're recording. Um, I have my guitar right here that I'm going to use just to show you that like how I record my guitar in Pro Tools, and you can do it right in your interface and do it right in Pro Tools. You don't need a be at a fancy studio or anything to do that. So I'm just gonna make a blank session right here. Call it record. Okay, so when I when I start up a new session, I always set up my basic tracks. So I'm gonna be using one audio track. Uh, actually, for this, I'm going to show you how I specifically record guitar. So, when I record guitar, I usually use a, since I'm going right into my interface, I usually use a, a guitar amp simulator that's a plug-in. So, what I do is I have two audio tracks for my guitar. I have one before the, the pre and like the the guitar sound and I have a, have that go through the guitar amp simulator and then I have another track recording what got through so why I do that is because if I want to change my sound of the guitar I can do that now because I have the original sound that was going inside Pro Tools so you probably if you're a little confused you'll probably understand a little more as I go through that so what I'm going to do, um, Master Fader, Master Aux, two audio tracks, and then another Aux. We're going to just have it mono. You can you can have if you're going to have the guitar amp be a stereo uh, sound, then you want the second audio track to be stereo not the first one but the second one but I'm gonna just use um, a mono guitar sound so I'm just gonna use a mono box so let's make all those tracks okay so let's start labeling these real quick So what I like to call the before and after, um, you just call it uh, preamp. It may that may get a little confusing, um, or you could just call it like guitar pre or some some. You can pick whatever you want that works for that, and then for that you just get guitar post, and then you just do amp. And then I like to move these around so it's kind of in order, so because it goes through this first, then this one, and then finally that one. So let's get all these routed. So what I'm doing right now, I'm sending every single track that I make to this master aux right here 
and this is for monitoring purposes, and then um, then the master fader will be like the final step on what's going out to my speakers. So I got everything routed to the master aux, and then I remembered a solo safe master aux, so then it's always sound is always going through no matter what. Okay, so um, my cable right here. So literally, this cable I'm going to show you. That's all you need. And if you play guitar, electric guitar, you will recognize this cable. It's simply a quarter-inch guitar cable. It's literally all you need. And so um, I'm going to plug it in the first input of my box, and I'm going to make sure that instrument is checked on my box. So then my box knows that the impedance is looking for is for a guitar. You will get a cleaner sound and um, you won't have to turn up the gain as much. So let's just make sure we're getting a sound here. I hope we are. So when I push that instrument, okay there we go. This guitar is not in tune at all, just so you guys know. But I just, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, just to show you I, I'm getting a signal. So, ooh, that's not in tune at all. Okay, so that's a little hot. Um, okay, so right now I have it, my box set at about five, and it goes up to ten on the preamp. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good level, and you can see that if I'm not touching it, I'm virtually not getting a signal. And then when I strum it, so it means it's going to get a pretty good, uh, pretty good noise ratio, which means there's a ratio between how loud you turn it up and how much noise gets built up on the noise floor. So it's pretty good right now, not a lot of noise. So let's route this so it'll go through an amp. So we're just going to make a send. Uh, since we're just doing mono, we're just going to do three. I'm going to hold down the option key to set it to zero. Set it the pre-fader mode. Let's label this. And so the input will be amp. And let's put an amp on here so let's see uh, amps are typically located in the harmonic section so up here you got air uh, comes with pro tools not a fan of air though um, amplitude is a really nice one I like so let's pop that on you can already hear like the sound of a guitar, like plugged into a, a heavy metal amp or something like that. So let's strum that. It's very, very out of tune, but you can see that we're getting a signal here. Um, may want to bring it down, the master here. So we got plenty of headroom to work with. Okay. I may want to bring my first down a little bit. Okay, it's always important to keep your levels um, bouncing between the green and the yellow. You don't really want it otherwise. Uh, this is so you can have plenty of headroom to work with when you add up all these other instruments. It may get overwhelming on how much uh, digital headroom you have. Uh, I see a lot of people recording vocals really amateurish and they're like hitting the red and it's like way up there all the time and they're wondering why it sounds so terrible. Well it's because you don't have any digital headroom left so you're going to be losing ones and zeros which is going to cause digital distortion. That's don't want that. Uh, so yeah. Terrible tuning, but getting a signal. So, 
let's get this ready to go to the post guitar. And by the way, this Amplitude is amazing guitar amp for Pro Tools, just so you know. Okay, so we gotta route the amp out. We gotta send this to the guitar post. I'm just gonna do bus four. Hold down Option key, prefader. Which okay. So we can see that the exact same signal that's leaving the amp is going to the guitar post. So this so is record just like a couple seconds because I know it sounds terrible. Okay. So we got that awful little bit right there. So I'm going to set down my guitar. I'm going to unplug it. So let's say, let's just listen to this. Okay. Um, okay, so let's say that once you get everything put together, you just don't like that guitar sound. It's just sounds terrible. Um, so the beauty of setting up this way. So let's just change the preset to something like totally different. Let's just do something soft. Like this, the banjo. Um, okay, so get rid of this because we don't like that anymore. Now when I play this, or when I record it, let's see what happens. Um, I'm not going to put this into record mode, you got to take that out. You can hear the different sound, completely different, and we have the audio there. And if you want, change it again until you find something you like. Um, so that's that's pretty much how you record in Pro Tools. Uh, know know what goes where in your interface. Know how to route everything within Pro Tools, and know how to bring it out. Um, if you have any questions about how to set up Pro Tools with a specific box, let me know. I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, if you have any video requests for anything recording or Pro Tools, let me know. So please comment, rate, subscribe, and thanks a lot, guys.